What's up guys? Hey, this is Scott York. The last time I made a video, you saw the 1948 Mr. Universe runner-up trophy that Steve won, John Grimmick, placed first. Well, today I have another amazing artifact for you. It's been referred to as the Holy Grail. And don't worry, I'm going to move this out into better lighting and you're going to be able to see this much better and close up and without all the reflections. This is the wall, the Holy Grail, it's, as it's been called, a bodybuilding that belonged to Steve Reeves. It was in his, part of his wall in his garage in Oakland, California. Uh, had to be 1941, 1942. Steve was 15, 16 years old. And this was his routine that he used to work out in his garage. Now, I believe Steve had a paper route, and I believe he saved his money, and I believe, correct me if I'm wrong if you know, that he saved his money and bought his first weight set. I haven't ever read anything to the contrary, so I'm just filling in the gaps here as to what equipment he used when he first started working out. And once again, we're going to move this out into better lighting, but right now, I just want to give you an overview of this amazing piece of history. George Helmer um, was friends with Steve Reeves and was also the executor of Steve's will when Steve passed away. So I'm going to read from the book a Moment in Time, The Steve Reeves Story by George Helmer. And if you don't have this book, I highly recommend you get it if you can find it. I don't know if it's still available. There is a website, stevereeves.com, that you might start at. If it's not there, you might try Amazon or eBay. So this is George talking. While I was in Hayward, California, on assignment, and knowing Steve was from Oakland, I wondered if his house still stood. If so, I thought it would be great to take a picture of it and show it to Steve. I drove to the Oakland Library, researched an old phone book from 1943, and found his address. Most people didn't know it was under Earl Malone's name, Steve's stepfather. I drove over to the address and took a couple of photos. I called Steve and asked him if he wanted to meet up for lunch the following week. We met at Marie Callender's, a restaurant in Escondido, on January 28, 1994. After ordering, I brought out the pictures of the house and asked Steve if he recognized the house. Steve said, why, that's my house in Oakland. I'll tell you an interesting story. I wrote my very first workout routine on the inside of the garage wall. I wonder if it's still there. A voice inside me, this is George talking, a voice inside me said, you have to go back and try to find that workout routine. With much work, I was able to locate the routine buried behind an interior wall that had been drywalled. I purchased the side of the garage that had the workout routine on it then I replaced the siding with new wood. I spoke with Joe Weider and told him the story of the wall. He wanted to do a story on it and asked me to come up to the office and he would have one of his writers, John Little, do a story on it in Flex Magazine. The story appeared in the November 94 issue and John Little and I became good friends and would work on additional projects in the future. So there's a few versions of this story. Uh, I believe on the Steve Reeves website there's a blog post, if it's still there, that details how Steve, or excuse me, that details how George went up to the house in Oakland. And this is what I have a hard time wrapping my head around. George just knocks on the door, doesn't know the people that lives there, and somehow is able to get into their garage. Try doing that now, these days and then he's able to start cutting on their garage walls. Well, I'm paraphrasing, but I believe that their garage was not up to code, and so they needed to have some work done anyway, and so they agreed that uh, George could have the wall in return for some work. 
There's like two or three stories, versions of this out there. The one I read is from the book that I just showed you. So there you go. This, this uh, framed wall section is 22 inches high and it's 30 inches across. I remember the last time I saw this was in 2008 at the Steve Reeves Film and Fitness Festival in uh, Valley Center, California. That was in 2008 because it was on display there. Joe Vitale bought it from George and I obtained it from Joe. So there's the trail of history. I think it's important as the years turn into decades that we keep track of important pieces of history like this. Lastly, in order to connect with the younger generation who most of them don't know who Steve Reeves was or is, I found that the best way is to talk about The, the Rock. That's Dwayne Johnson. Because as I continue to study uh, and educate myself more on Steve, you know, I've been studying him for, I don't know, 10 to 15 years, but there's always more to learn that The Rock was interviewed and this comes from the Jan and Terry Todd newsletter from the Stark Center, which I think you can find those online. The Rock talks about how Steve was the first one. Steve influenced The Rock. The Rock, Dwayne Johnson had posters and pictures of Steve on his wall. So the younger generation certainly knows of Dwayne The Rock Johnson. So I think the more we maybe communicate that to the younger generation, maybe they'll understand who influenced guys like The Rock. Anyway, I'm going to move this out to a better lighting and we're going to talk about it a little bit more. Okay, so I've taken it outside the garage here just to get a better, better lighting because it's got a really nice frame with glass and it's hard to see. There's so many reflections there in the garage. Uh, let's go through what it says here. At the top it says cleans right here. And from what I understand he was using a black crayon according to George. And it says 115 pounds and you can't really make out the uh, reps over here. Next is press. It says it looks like 115 pounds and the reps are 10. Below that it says curl and over here for the weight 75 and for the reps 15. So we know that Steve was a proponent of higher reps. Even at a younger age he was using higher reps. Below that it says bench curl the weight is 55 and it's 15 reps. Below that it says leaning row. Right here. Leaning row. I'm assuming that's a barbell row. 105 pounds. Remember he was 15, 16 years old and 10 reps. Below that it says bench press and you can see this has been uh, rubbed out and marked over as he made progress. It looks like 155 and then the reps are 10. Below that it says squat and it's 200 pounds and the weight, the reps look like it says 12. Below that it says pullover. I hate to assume but you know you wonder if that is a dumbbell pullover at 40 pounds and it looks like 10 reps right here. It's a little smudged. It almost looks like 40, but I don't know. My gut tells me maybe that was a 10. Below that it says back bend. And maybe those are good mornings. 150 pounds and 20 reps. Under that it says laterals here 40 pounds 
30 reps. Below that, it says upright row. Now I know there's been a lot of controversy with Steve and working his traps. Perhaps he was doing this for shoulders, upright rows with a wider grip. 75 pounds, 10 reps. Below that it says front raise, which in reading some of his later works, I know he got away from front raises right here because he felt like the shoulders got enough stimulation from the behind the neck presses and the laterals. He didn't want his front delts to get out of line with the rest of his body. 30 pounds and 10 reps. Below that it says dumbbell press, 75 pounds and 10 reps. Below that it says curl behind the neck, and that one's hard to read. Here's the word neck, right there. And it says, it looks like it says 35 pounds, three and a five, and 15 reps. Below that, it says stomach. And it says 20 reps. So just imagine you're in Oakland, California. It's 1941, 1942. You live uh, in a quiet little white house with a detached garage. You're working out and you're riding your exercises, your weight, and your reps as you progress. This has been called the holy grail of bodybuilding. And somewhere out there is a Flex magazine, Muscle and Fitness. It might be Muscle Mag, I just can't remember. I know I have it, and I'm gonna have to make a follow-up video because when George contacted it must have been Weeder. When George contacted the Weeder offices, they asked him to bring this wall to their offices in, I believe, uh, Woodland Hills, California. And that's how all this transpired. So we got to thank George Helmer. If it weren't for him, you wouldn't be seeing this right now. So, wow. This is going to go back into storage. It's going to be well cared for. It's going to be cleaned regularly. And I'm just blown away that I own it. So thank you to Steve Reeves, George Helmer, Joe Vitale. There's a piece of bodybuilding history. The Holy Grail, The Wall, Steve Reeves' first workout. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear them. Leave them below. Make sure you subscribe. I got a lot more videos, a lot more things that are going to blow your mind related to Steve Reeves and stuff that's never been seen before. Make sure you subscribe, and I can't wait to share it with you. All right, have a great day. Talk to you later.